about the postural assessment. Every time you see a new client, whether it's a demonstration or it's the first time they're coming in for a dynamic therapeutic stretching session, we need to evaluate and assess their posture. This is a very simple eyeball approach to uh, their own posture. We're looking for tilts, torques or twists and rotations throughout the bony landmarks. I will go through that with you. Very simple, if you need to do this periodically through their course or program of sessions, I would recommend that. So the first thing we want to do is we want to look at what we call the mid-sagittal plane, which is dividing the body into two. This line, this black line that runs through the skeleton is what we call the line of gravity. Always make sure they know where their center of gravity is, which is right here at S2. That's where all the pivoting takes place. That's right in the heart of the pelvis. The important thing we want to do is split the body into left and right sides. So what we're looking at is we're looking at a particular line across the acromioclavicular joint, across the clavicle, and we're looking for tilts to one side, leaning to one side, and that tells us a lot about what's happening at the spinal level. We also need to look at the occipital base there is a particular level that we look at here, the zygoma, and also the sphenoid, and the TMJ. You've got four landmarks that you look at in the skull to make sure that there is no tilts and there's no twists. You're also looking to see if the body is leaning to one side, etc. This tells you what's happening with the soft tissue or how the soft tissue is influencing that particular part of the anatomy. We then come down and look at the position of the hands. If you notice on this chart, you should be able to see between the thumb and forefinger so that when you're walking down the street, the arm is supposed to move in a straight direction. This is about balance. So it's very important that you know the position of the hand and you also know the position of the shoulder. If, for example, the hand is too far forward and the back of the hand is now on your uh, front of your thighs, you know that they have rounded shoulders and you know that they're going to be moving across their bodies as they walk. This will increase the tension, increase the rounding of the shoulders. So we need to get them aware of the fact that the arms are by the side when they stand. Very simple. We're also looking for um, torque or protraction as we call it through the shoulder uh, girdle. The pectoralis minor attaches to ribs three, four, and five, and it is the, probably uh, the muscle that is involved the most in rounding of the shoulder. So we want to look for that. Place your finger on those trigger point areas, the areas of high neurological activity, so they can feel where that tension is. And you're looking to see whether one side of the body is more twisted than the other. So when it's like that, it's called a torque. So if it's on one side, it's called a unilateral torque. If it's on both sides, you've got one side moving this way and one side moving this way, that's called a bilateral torque. So you want to be able to explain these things carefully to your clients because they don't know. We know they don't know. You also want to be able to look at the crest of the hip because that tells you again if there's any tilts um, to one side or the other because that will affect the soft tissue in that lumbar quadrant here quadratus lumborum, the sciatic nerve, all those structures including the kidney, the viscera as well. We've got the point here on the ASIS, you want to be able to hook your thumbs under the ASIS and see again if there's any twists and you can also see if there's any torque which is twisting. That tells you whether the hip is correctly in position or whether there's any uh, movement like this when the body is actually in motion. We also look at the trochanter, the two points in the trochanter. We also look at the position of the kneecap. The kneecap should be pointing straight towards us. The toes must be no more, or the foot must be no more than 12 degrees turned out. Anything from zero to 12 degrees is okay. We're also looking for hallux valgus, or the toe crossover. And we're also looking at the subtalar joint. 
Is the subtalar joint in neutral? Is the tibia sitting squarely right on top of the talus bone? Are there arches? Do you have a nice longitudinal arch? How does that look? Because if they don't have an arch, we can tell them we can help build those arches. Very important. So we want to look at that structure as a whole. We then move to the coronal plane, which is the sideline position, and we want to be able to get the back of the head in alignment with the mid-thoracic area to see if there's any kyphosis or bending or buckling of the spine and to see if there's any protraction of the neck. And we really want to just mention uh, that for every inch that the head goes forward, it places an extra 15 to 20 pounds on all the structures in the back of the neck. A lot of people come here because they have head, neck, shoulder pain or impingements. And a lot of the time it's simply the position of the skull or the head is not in its correct uh, alignment. So we need to bring that back. We need to let them know that the neck holds up the head. It's not the other way around. So we find also a lot of muscle imbalances in the neck area. We also want to make sure that the ear and the shoulder are also in alignment and that also your center of gravity is in its rightful position. Most people do not have, for a man, level, a level pelvis. The PSIS, the ASIS should be dead level, completely straight. With a female, it can be down by five degrees. Anything more than that, and you are overloading all the structures on the front of the pelvis, and you are underworking the powerful postural muscles in the back. So you want to be able to explain the whys and wherefores of pelvic imbalance because this is where all the power is generated, this is where your posture is seated and this is where all the correct alignment is. Your neck is affected by the position of the pelvis. You can work on the neck all day long. If you don't get this right, nothing works. Remember you have 29 muscles on either side of the pelvis that work in sync with each other on both sides and they tie into the lumbar spine. So a lot of the times when we're working on lower back problems, we're actually working on pelvic alignment problems or misalignments. So we want to get that balanced and then everything else starts to straighten up. The spine is very forgiving. It has 25 vertebrae sitting on top of or in between cushioned uh, joints, basically, nice little intervertebral discs, and they are very mobile. It's incredible how mobile and how quickly you can change the position of the spine and the pelvis. Make sure the knee is soft. This is a nice soft knee. Don't get, uh, be aware of lockouts of the knee. In one moment you've got a lockout of the knee, you're overstretching the structures at the back of the knee and you're overloading all the structures on the front. So the patella starts to push into the soft tissue on the front of the knee and you can get irritation from that. Also, if you are leaning forward and you are locking out your knees, you're not weight bearing on your heels, you're weight bearing on the midfoot and therefore putting a lot of strain on the arch, putting a lot of strain on the toes and you're pro probably getting claw and hammer toes as a result. So this area here is the key area for our postural assessments. We also need to look at the back, the rear area, check the alignment at the inferior angle of the scapula. Make sure that you only have an inch and a half distance between the vertebrae and the vertebral border of the scapula. Make sure the hip crest is straight and check to see the alignment of the ischial tuberosity. We also do a test for the SI joints to make sure the SI joints are all moving nice and freely. You can let the client know if the SI joint is not um, mobile. If that's the case, you will have uh, a lot of strain and stress going through your lower back as a result of the SI joints not working. Um, and then you can look at the hip crest from the rear as well. So most important about this is, this takes about 10 to 15 minutes to do. You're getting the client on board. They now understand through the picture that they're painting or you're painting on the wall. They're understanding what's short, what's tight, what needs stretching, what needs lengthening, what needs strengthening and what needs stability to hold you in this new position. You start with your foundational strength, stretching work and then you go into foundational stability work before you do all your functional work. So this really is the key to initiating our services here um, at StretchFest.